Hi everyone. So uh, I'm going to do a question to do with uh, two stage simplex. So this one's after 2021 paper. This question is a 2021. So it says Suze is preparing for a triathlon event that's taking part next month. It involves three activities: swimming, cycling, running. Uh, it's got some information here that we need to build constraints with. It tells us that X is swimming, Y is cycling, and Z is running. So that's good that they, they told us that. So it says formulate the information as a linear programming problem, state the objective, and list the constraints, and simplify the inequalities with integer coefficients. The amount of papers are marked when they're not integers, which is shocking. Just kind of make sure you get it as an integer. Right, so I want to maximise the total time spent cycling and running. So I want to maximise, I'll do it here, T for time, use any letter really, can't you? Cycling and running, so that's Y plus Z, isn't it? There we go. Right, so that's that one done. It says train for at most 39 hours. So that's all of them together, less than or equal to 39. So it doesn't really matter how many you do each, as long as you do less than 39. At least 40% 40, 40 of the time um, swimming. Right, so swimming is at X. So at least... 40% is two fifths of the total time, which is x plus y plus z. So this is what we've got to be careful about. If I multiply three by the two and multiply three by the five, I get five x is greater than or equal to two x plus two y plus two z. The convention is to try to keep your integer values positive. So I'm going to take the two x over and make it 3x is greater than or equal to 2y plus 2z. There. Everything's an integer, and I've nicely made it all positive. So I've done that one, done that one, so it's done that one. Spend a whole total of at least 28 hours swimming and running. So swimming and running, which is x plus z, has to be at least... 28. Yeah. So that's not too bad, is it? So here's where's my constraints. And so I've got this constraint, I've got this simplified constraint, and I've got this constraint there. So that's is that all of part A done? Because I've also got the maximized bit. So double check. So we've got the objective function and we've got the list of constraints which are simplified as integers. Marvelous. So that's the first bit done. Part B says. Susie decides to solve this linear program in my use of two state simplex. So remember, two state simplex is because of the greater than or equal to. We normally have less than or equal to for simplex because you're looking at something where you want to be solving within a finite region there. So greater than or equal to, oh yeah, also like being able to use zero origin. But two stage. The first one is just to see if we can do it. So we're going to set it up as two stage. Right then, that's how we're going to do So my x plus y plus z, less than or equal to 39, is fine. So that just becomes x plus y plus z plus s1 is equal to 39. Yeah. Now the 3x. Uh, is greater than or equal to 2y plus 2z. I'm going to be a bit sneaky. I'm going to rearrange it as a less than or equal to. So I'm going to kind of rearrange it as looking that way. So it's going to go to a 2y uh, plus 2z minus 3x is less than or equal to 0. You could have had them kind of both on each side. Um, also, where was it? Was it on? There's a bit of information needed. It's the at most bit, I think, is it? Oh, no. 
No. Right, so I've done that like that. So then that will transform. Oops. I'll say a minus 3x, a plus 2y, a plus 2z, plus s2 is equal to 0. Then I've got this last one, which is x plus y is greater than or equal to 28. So this is, oh, wait, pull up that one. This is, you can see this is already kind of set up as a greater than for definite. So this is the one that we need to take care of. Oops. So I've got x plus y minus s3 plus a1. So I drag it down and ping it back up to the line. So the way I see it, that's equal to that. Okay. Now remember for the two stage, I need a line, the final line in my table is like an i. They actually use a in one of them, but it's minus the sum of an ai. That's what I want as a final line. My p line, which was the, where is it? Oh, t line, the one. t equals y plus z. Well, they've actually used p, haven't they, down there? So let's go back and change that t into an a. So p equals y plus z. That transforms as p minus y minus z. And that would go in the line above there. It's got a P line there, haven't I? Right, so let's sort out my I line. So if I transform this as A1, it's 28 minus X minus Y uh, plus S3. That's the sum of AI. So I is equal to minus 28 minus X minus Y plus S3. So I is a minus 28 plus x plus y minus s3 and then take everything over apart from the 28 so i minus x minus y plus s3 is equal to minus 28 uh, so we'll check that make sure I've got that right yeah so that's the line which goes in at the bottom so the line at the bottom is a minus 1 a minus 1 a 0 0 0 1 um, 0 minus 28. The P line was a minus y, so my, 0 minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then I have the other constraint. Let's have a look, where is it? So for this one, 1x, one 1y, one 1z, one 1s1, one, so stick my basic variable above the test one. 0, 0, 0, 0. 39, checking the time. Uh, what have I got here for the rearranged one? So the rearranged one is a minus 3x, a 2y, a 2z, an s2, so I stick my basic variable in as s2. Uh, is that zero? No. And then the final one, here it is, is 1x, 1y, Minus an S3 plus an A1 is equal to 28, and that gives a basic variable of A1. So I think that's pretty much set up. Let's check what the question says to us then. So part B, set up initial tablet for solving this using the two stages in fact. You must show them how the constraints have been made into equations using slack variables exactly once and a surplus and exactly one artificial variable. The rows for the two objective functions are for Yeah, that's everything now, isn't it? There. So I hope that's helpful to you. Right, see you later. Bye-bye.